Today is day eight of the 21 day fasting challenge. Um, personally, I am feeling a little bit uh, weaker today than I felt yesterday. I felt like yesterday I felt a lot stronger than today. Um, partially because I had a lot of meetings. Uh, we had three services yesterday as well as I was live streaming after that. And then we had one more meeting with our um, some of our leaders and that lasted till like 10 p.m. So I was woke up more tired today than before but I think it's just a physically um, Sunday is a very heavy day for me it's, it's I call it my Super Bowl um, it, it's 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 a day where a lot of work Monday and Sunday are, are the most most challenging days but I'm gonna pace myself and you know after spending some time in prayer spending some time in the word praying in tongues um, you know I feel refreshed in my spirit but my body is a little bit more weaker today than I, I would say was yesterday and so which is okay it's not about you know the physical strength always be there but for the spiritual strength to be there what i want to share with you today is a verse from book of daniel and then afterwards i'm going to share a little bit about the daniel's fast but first of all what i would like to go to is to go to daniel chapter 10 and verse 12. So if you have your Bible, let's drop that in the chat. I'm going to go straight for this uh, message that I have in my heart today to share with you. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 12. Now let's give a little background story. Daniel, um, I would say Daniel had two types of, if I would say even a fast, it wouldn't be biblically accurate. But he had this first time where he did a Daniel's 10-day test. I would say Daniel's 10-day test where he just got into the courts of Babylon and then as a young man he refused to, to participate in this diet that these people had. And so God blessed him because of that. And then later on we see that Daniel takes um, three weeks for mourning and pressing into God. In fact, if we just go in this chapter a little bit earlier where the Bible says that in those days I Daniel was mourning three full weeks so 21 days I ate no pleasant food no meat or wine came into my mouth nor did I anoint myself at all until three weeks were fulfilled so this is where most of us get this idea of the Daniel's fast uh, from this verse um, 21 days now there is no reference in here or no mention in here of the word fast um, in fact fasting means abstaining from food this is more of limiting yourself from food but nevertheless I want us to look at the fact that though Daniel did not technically biblically fasted he did sacrifice and he did go through self-denial and God honored that and so for those of you who are doing that in this these 21 days, I want you to notice that God sees your heart. Nowhere in the Bible do we see God telling us to do a Daniel's fast. In fact, for the record, in the Old Testament, God only commanded one day of fasting, but seven days of feasting. So, um, so it you know God is for food God is not you know for starvation let's let's get this out of the way right away because some of us are kind of like think that God doesn't want us to eat it's not about that and so and when you're considering doing or if you are switching or you are doing a Daniel's fast I would just give you one simple rule whenever you begin a fast remember if it doesn't mean anything to you it does not mean anything to God do not offer God something that costs you nothing. For Daniel, this meant something. Now, he was still working most likely in the palace and this wasn't just not eating. I want you to see he was mourning. There was brokenness that was taking place. He didn't eat pleasant food. Some translation actually says choice food, fancy food, rich food, food that satisfies, bread of desires. So he gave up enjoying eating and only ate what was necessary. So this was an expression of abstinence for the purpose of self-discipline. And this was no meat, no wine, and he didn't even anoint himself. Meaning honestly, he went through three weeks of a lot of mourning. A lot of crying, a lot of repentance, a lot of pressing into God. 
a lot of humbling himself. Now he didn't abstain completely from food but he abstained from a lot of food meaning he restricted his diet and God blessed him for that. God saw his heart for that and so if that is where some of you are at today where you are not completely doing a water fast and you're restricting yourself from you know maybe eating just one time a, a, a day or maybe you're also you on the top of that you cut off all of the other ungodly things in your life and you're really just pressing into the Lord right now and while that could might not be a biblical fast it is a biblical way of denying yourself and humbling yourself one of the very effective ways and it could be very practical way for many people who are not able to do a water fast for 21 days or 10 days or you know seven days whatever that is for you for those of you that are able to do that I want to just encourage you offer God something that costs you something. You know, don't offer God something that means nothing to you. Like if giving up coffee for you is not, not, not a big deal because honestly you don't drink coffee, that's not a sacrifice. It would be like me saying, I'm going to give up smoking. Well, I don't smoke. And plus smoking is not a sacrifice. Smoking is is a violation of, of your health and so it, so sacrifices are things that actually mean something to you and they are good things and we're giving up the good for the sake of the great. We're giving up the good for the sake of God. We're giving up the, I would say, the, the bowl for the sake of a blessing. We're giving up the, the, the physical for the sake of the spiritual. So Daniel does that. So if we keep on reading we see that he gives up pleasant food meats, you know, sweets most likely, dairy um, and he gives up all these extra drinks. You know, I had a person that came to me yesterday and they said, Vlad, um, you know, I want to break the spirit of gluttony in my life. And I told him, I said, you know, if you want to do that, why don't we join the fast? Next 14 days, do a fast, some kind of a fast. I'm saying, I'm not, I can't tell you what to fast but I was like, for sure, you should fast junk food and soda and sweets. And I was like, cut off these three things, even after the 14 day fast, I was like, I promise you, you will experience breakthrough in your life. And I was like, in these 14 days, I want you to begin to pray down and break the stronghold of sugar, junk food and obesity. It's a stronghold. And I said, God can help you to do that. Because I'm like, I, I can't just pray for you hey, let me break off the spirit of obesity. You know, let me break off the, um, the stronghold of, you know, uh, obesity. That, that's just not how that works if you don't have a habit to maintain that. And so I want you to see that Daniel, he doesn't do it for health reasons. He does it for spiritual reasons, but it does have health benefits. And so Daniel stays away from all of these things for 21 days. And then I want you to see this. On the 24th day of the first month, I was on the side of the great river. So Daniel spending some time in the nature, which I want to encourage you. Begin to take some time. Don't just, even if you're praying and fasting, go a little bit on the nature. Go for a walk. Go in the park. Um, get some fresh air. Daniel was on the side of the great river. He lifted his eyes and looked and behold, there was a man clothed in linen whose waist was girded with gold. And then it describes this incredible being. And verse 7, I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, but the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell upon them. So he has this crazy vision and then he hears the sound. And I want us to look at this, is that, of course, this man touches him. He gets trembling in his knees and he says this in verse 11, O Daniel, men greatly beloved, Understand the words that I speak to you. Stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. O oh, Daniel, a man greatly beloved. I just want to speak that over somebody here today who is humbling themselves, who is cutting away food completely or restricting some foods and who is breaking themselves before God. O oh, Daniel, greatly loved. God loves you. You are beloved of God. I want you to hear this right now. God is for you. 
He loves you. Drop that in the chat right now. I am His beloved. I am loved by Him. Somebody drop that in the chat. I am loved by God. Fasting doesn't make God love me more. Not fasting doesn't make God love me less. But I love this that after 21 days, this supernatural being comes to Daniel and says, Daniel, you are loved greatly. I love you. God loves you. He loves you. And that's an important reminder. You might not feel loved right now. You might feel discouraged right now. You might feel weak and tired. You might feel even a little bit confused. In fact, I'm pretty sure Daniel physically didn't feel super great. But when these words came, it brought such an encouragement. You are greatly beloved. Greatly beloved. You are greatly loved. You are loved by your Father. He loves that you are pressing in. He loves that you are giving things up. He loves that you value Him more than even your own essential needs. He loves you. And then verse 12, He says, do not fear. The second thing I want you to drop in the chat, do not fear. Whatever is about to happen in your life, whatever this year is about to bring, whatever you're going through, I want you to hear this from God's Word. And me speaking prophetically into your life right now, you are greatly loved, the first thing. And secondly, do not fear. There's over 364 or five times in the Bible it says, do not be afraid. Why do not be afraid? Because God loves you and perfect love drives out fear. You have absolutely greater reasons not to be afraid. You may have reasons to be afraid, but your reasons not to be afraid are greater. Do not be afraid of tomorrow. Do not be afraid of maybe even you're not gonna, you're afraid maybe of you're gonna die or not gonna finish the fast. What's gonna happen with my family? What's going to happen with my marriage? What's going to happen with my business? What's going to happen with my ministry? Am I going to be able to carry this load that I've been entrusted? Am I going to be able to finish the race strong? I'm not sure what to do next. I'm confused and anxiety can settle in. If you keep meditating on the things you don't know, if you keep rehearsing the things you can't control, and God comes to you today through His Word, and He says, do not fear. He said that to Israel when they were walking through the, to the Red Sea, He says, don't be afraid. The enemies you see today, you will see them again no more. And God split the Red Sea. The angels came to the shepherds and they said, don't be afraid. I bring you a good news. Angel came to Mary and said, don't be afraid. You will conceive a child. An angel came to Zacharias and he says, don't be afraid, your prayers have been heard. Do not fear. Jesus said when we get persecuted, do not fear those that kill the body. But there's nothing else they can do. Don't fear tomorrow. Don't fear the future. Don't fear the ministry. Don't fear fasting. Don't fear sacrificing. Don't fear giving your life fully to God. Don't fear that, oh, what, who's going to provide for me? Who's going to care for me? Do not worry about these things, Jesus says, because your Father in heaven knows what you need. Somebody just one more time, drop that in the chat. Do not be afraid. Only believe. Only trust. If you can't see it, Trust Him.
Blind Bartimaeus couldn't see Jesus, but he could hear Jesus. And sometimes when you don't see the future, hear God saying to you, don't be afraid. I got you. I'm holding you. I'm walking with you. You're in the palm of my hand. I will see you through. You're going to make it. Now then the angel said, this spiritual being said, from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself, your words were heard. The third thing I want to share with you today is this. God has seen you and God has heard your prayer. Some of you just need to be reassured of this. Number three, drop that in the chat. God has heard my prayer. Your prayer did not get tossed in the garbage can. Not only God heard your prayer, I want you to see what the angel says. He says the first day, the first day you made a decision to fast, the first day you made a decision to pray, the first day you made a decision to humble yourself before God, God saw that. God there and then saw that and He heard your words. He heard the cry. He heard the attitude. He heard the posture of your heart saying, Lord, I want to know you. Lord, I want to seek you. Lord, I want more of you. Lord, save my family. Lord, I need a breakthrough in this very difficult time. And the angel said, I heard you and I have seen the first day you made the decision. The first day you set your heart. That's why, you know, fasting is so important because it's about setting your heart. It's not about just abstaining from food because once you set your heart right, God sees that. God is moved by that. God takes notice of that and God hears that. Your humility, you, you setting your heart right and you pressing into the Lord. So the first thing I mentioned, you are greatly beloved. The second thing, do not be afraid. And third thing, when you set your heart to seek Him, He sees you and He hears you. He doesn't hear you when you get the answer. He hears you when you pray the prayer. Mm. Somebody dropped that in the chat right now. That's the word. God hears you not only when you get the answer, he hears you when you pray the prayer. He said to Daniel, the moment you made up your mind to humble yourself, I heard you. He got the answer 21 days later, but he got the prayer. Prayer was received 21 days earlier. God hears your prayer when you pray. God sees your humility when you fast and he dispatches his angels your way. Drop that in the chat. God he heard me before I even got the answer. God saw me before I got the breakthrough. God hears you when you pray, not only when you receive the needed answer. Sometimes we feel like I prayed but I don't see the answer. Please understand, God hears your prayer even if you don't see the answer. Even if you don't see the answer to that prayer. For 21 days, all Daniel was doing was crying, mourning. There seemed to be no answer. But the Lord came and He says, I want you to staple this verse in your heart. From the first day, You've set your heart to understand. Your words were heard. Your words were heard. God hears the prayers when even we don't see the answer. Those prayers are heard. Now rises the question. 
Why am I not seeing the answer? Before we answer that, I'm going to touch on one more thing. He says, I have come because of your words. The fourth thing I want to encourage you with today is that God is working behind the scenes. God is coming with an answer. He is working things behind the scenes you don't see. He is right now working in the dark. Maybe you don't see. God is arranging things, rearranging things in your life, in your family, and in your ministry. He says, I have come because of your words. God dispatches His angels because He heard your prayer. God releases His favor because He saw your humility. God is releasing His breakthrough because He saw the brokenness in your heart. He's moved by our faith. He's moved by our prayer. The need doesn't move God. Your faith does. Your prayer does. Your humility does. Your brokenness does. It's not the fact that you're not putting food into your mouth. It's that your heart is set because fasting sets your heart. What did the angel say? He says, you set your heart to understand. You set your heart to humble yourself before your God. So he's on the way to you. So the first thing I mentioned, you are greatly beloved. The second thing I mentioned is do not be afraid of the future. The third thing I mentioned is God heard your prayer even before you see the answer. God heard your prayer even before you have witnessed the answer. The fourth thing I mentioned is that God has dispatched His angels when He saw your heart posture of humility. He is working behind the scenes. Now, the last thing I want to mention, and that's the number five. That's verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. I believe one of the reasons why some answers are delayed is because there is a warfare going on in the spiritual realm that you and I are not aware of. Sometimes God pulls the curtains and lets us see the warfare, but usually He doesn't. And Daniel persevered for 21 days, not knowing there is a warfare taking place. The answer was on His way. Prayer was heard, angel was dispatched. But He said, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days and he said and behold the Michael one of the chief princes came to help me as you persevere as you persist I believe there there becomes an overwhelming victory in the spirit realm that you will benefit from in the natural realm down the road it might not be right away but as Daniel persevered these 21 days help came in the realm of the Spirit help came to this prince that was fighting on his behalf your prayer and fasting your humility and brokenness aids spiritual angels it honestly almost like gives them this, this freedom and license to push forward in your life. Push back the darkness. Push back the darkness off of the people that you are praying for, fasting for, and believing for. I want to encourage you today. Don't get discouraged when, you, when it gets hard. Don't quit when it gets difficult. Because there is a warfare that's taking place. Some answers when God hears the prayer, He sends the answer right away and they are received right away. But sometimes there are delays that happen and we should not be discouraged by these delays. 
we should anchor ourselves deeper in God and press in further, go deeper until we get that answer in our spirit that something changed, something shifted, something is going to be different from now on. If you quit too early, if you give up too soon, if you kind of not persevere, the danger of that is that you pretty much can sometimes, not in every case, and I don't want to uh, bring guilt trip on anybody, but some of us, we abort the miracle. We abort the breakthrough because we quit when it gets hard. Some of us, we quit when it gets hard in our faith in God. The Bible says that the seed that fell on the ground and the hardships came in and they just choked the seed. They just didn't, um, the seed just dried up. People just give up too quick. They quit too soon when it gets hard. But I want to challenge you today. God loves you. Don't be afraid. God is working behind the scenes even if you don't see it. God heard your prayer. But if there is a delay, if there is a resistance, if there is a withstanding, the Bible says that this, this, this being withstood against the angel that was coming to help Daniel. Don't quit. Paralyze the resistance with persistence. Persevere. Drop that in the chat. Paralyze resistance with persistence. Persevere. Don't quit. Persevere. Keep going. And then the understanding will come. Breakthrough will come. God is working behind the scenes on your behalf. God is working behind the scenes on your family's behalf. God is arranging things. He's working things behind. Your task is to stay humble. Your task is to keep praying and your task is to be obedient in what He tells you to do. Whether it's in the fast, whether it's in giving, whether it's in forgiving, whether it's in intercession, whether it's in whatever that is, your task is to be obedient in that. Amen. I believe that this was a blessing to a lot of us. If this was a blessing to you, drop number one in the chat right now. Um, if you receive this word, these five uh, things that I've shared with you today, um, uh, drop number one in the chat. Um, if you are just tuning in, there's um, hundreds of you that just recently um, joined in as I started to speak. Um, don't forget to hit thumbs up right now to where you're watching and then share this broadcast still. I know that we're coming toward the end but share this broadcast still. Um, if you're just tuning in, I'm going to take a little plug in right now and let you know that um, I have a book called Fast Forward. It will really motivate you in your journey of pursuing God. Uh, make sure you check that out on Amazon. You can download it on my website as well. And if you have gotten the book, be kind to leave a review. It will mean a lot to us. You can, you can get this book um, in digital form, in audio form, as well as in the paperback cover. Um, and so that's just my little plug-in. Thank you so much for that. And right now, I want us to take time to pray. Um, Lord, just drop that prayer emoji where you are watching uh, right now. Drop that prayer emoji where you're tuning in from and let's pray. Let me pray for you and then we're going to answer some questions as well as um, read the health tip for today. Okay, prayer emojis are coming through. Come on. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we believe your word. We believe that you are working behind the scenes. We believe right now that we should not be afraid. We reject fear. We will starve fear and we will feed our faith. We will look to you, Lord. Lord, right now we make a decision to accept your love. We're not more loved because we're not eating. We are loved because Jesus died on the cross for us, because you are love. Lord, right now, we renounce fear. 
anxiety, discouragement, um, just, just all of these demonic confusion and doubts. Lord, we choose to believe that you see us. When we set our heart right, you notice us. When we humble ourselves, you hear us. We believe that you have heard every prayer we prayed. And we believe that you are answering these prayers. Lord, we believe that you are sending an answer our way. We believe, Lord, that you are also sending angels to bring breakthrough in our life. You're working on our family members. You're working on our marriages. You are working on our finances and on our ministries. Lord, we trust in you. Even when we don't see it, I know that you're working. We trust that you are working. We love you, Lord. Strengthen the people that are fasting and praying. Would you purify their hearts? I pray for those who are unsure whether they should do it. Would you just give, put that into their heart to join this fast, even though it's, we're almost halfway through. Give them the desire. Draw them. Let them not offer something to you that doesn't cost them anything. As you met Daniel, meet us. As you answered Daniel, answer us. As you have come through for Daniel, come through for us, Lord. May we experience breakthrough that we so desperately need. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you receive that prayer, drop in the chat, I receive. And right now I'm going to go to the Fast Forward um, book. Um, so in the Fast Forward book, day 8, which is today is fasting is feasting. Come on, <laughs> fasting is feasting. So uh, read the devotional for um, the day eight. It deals with feasting. So make sure that you um, read that. It will be a great blessing to you on how to feast during fasting. You're like, so how can I feast during fasting? Read the devotional for and then the scriptures to meditate. Um, so I have the, the book uh, on this side right there um, open where you can find it or on my website but let me read to you right now um, the fasting tip for day eight during the stage one and two of the fast your body will still be expelling toxins and damaged cells every time you go to the bathroom using intestinal in, intestinal cleansing product will help more thoroughly cleanse and detoxify your body so remember as you're going through right now this time your body is still cleansing itself and expelling toxins and damaged cells every time you go to the bathroom so that's one of the reasons why sometimes we experience different color in the urine so stay hydrated drink water add a little bit of salt uh, uh, sea salt or um, fasting salt into your uh, water so it could help a little bit with um, you and um, yeah so um, we will take uh, just a few moments and answer some questions and then um, get ready for our live stream tomorrow amen so we got about a hundred people watching at hungry gen as well as on on facebook and then um amen um, guys as i'm going to uh, just open um, the questions i'm gonna ask you for something if this was a blessing today if god really spoke i want to encourage you to to also give toward the ministry i want to encourage you to give also um toward um vlad, vlad subject ministries uh, for a few reasons um, we as a ministry is a good soil where we release books like if you check right now I'm going to show you on our website um, we release um, content so tons of books that are released and all of them are available um, free of charge from fast forward to spirit Feel Jesus fight back single ready to mingle break free like look at how many translations we, we've done that for the glory of God 
and so um, as well as we have so many other things that we do like courses so not only we do um, books but we also release courses and as you know we offer them free of charge as well people deliverance holy spirit so much so much things that uh, we produce here at this ministry release blogs as well as other resources so not just blogs but podcasts weekly actually right now we're doing daily podcasts as well as uh, pdfs where you can download longer teachings tons of reading plans um, for people as well as audio and so much so just wanted to say guys that um, this ministry is a good soil we love the Lord um, we take these funds very seriously to put them into distributing the message of Jesus and to spread the gospel of the Lord and so um, uh, you can give through Cash App you can give through Venmo you can give through PayPal but most importantly you can give through the website and so when you go to the website on uh, pastorvlad.org. I know it, it'll take a little bit longer um, than going through Cash App, but we are a nonprofit and you can become a partner or you can just give one time um, through um, the website. And then from there, you can actually monitor your giving. You can actually um, change your giving, cancel your giving. And so, um, and then partnership is where we are looking for more partners this year. And maybe that's one of the things the Lord will put on your heart this year, not just to occasionally give one time, but to become a partner. Uh, we have about, um, I would say, I think about 10 people that are on the, on the staff for this ministry and so your giving really helps also their families um, they are dedicating you know full time to this to help us do this edit upload you know there's spiritual people some of them are from tri-cities some of them are not from tri-cities and so i just wanted to let you know that this is what it goes for and i really appreciate you guys making that um, if that's what the lord puts on your heart to become a partner if God, God puts on your heart, may this be one of your decisions this year for next 12 months to partner with, um, with our ministry monthly. You know, and you might have a lot of things that you partner with like Netflix and other stuff and, you know, and maybe it's good to cut off some of those partnerships and to partner with the things that God is doing. Amen. So um, thank you so much. So many of you um, started to give on YouTube chat. Um, God bless you, Amy, um, Lisa, Alexander. Um, God bless you, uh, Kosua, God bless you as well, Donna, um, amen, amen, God bless you. God bless you guys um, for that and those that are giving online as well or Cash App or Venmo, we really appreciate that, we honor you and we celebrate um, all of our donors and all of our um, uh, partners. Now, when it comes to questions, how many times is it written in the Bible, do not fear? Um, uh, I think it's, uh, how many days, how many days is in a year? 365? So 365, from my understanding is 365. So what in, intestinal cleaning products do you recommend? So I don't have any recommendation person. I would just say that you just search that for yourself. Um, uh, things that are, I don't necessarily personally use anything of that but it, it could be helpful and uh, to do that so just I would just ask that you just do some research yourself when coming out of a water fast can you drink protein shakes for the first three days I, I don't know much about uh, protein shakes um, so I would just research that more um, I stay away I just drink soup eat, eat soups um, and eat just you know bone broth and and, uh, and and some more soups and protein shakes that's just personal kind of approach and I know a lot of people who do that um, so I would just do a little bit more of research um, I've never drink protein shakes after the fast to come out of the fast I'm doing a water fast for first three days I'm awake for 24 hours then sleep two three hours up again for 24 hours is it normal do I need to do anything different actually for some people it's normal to have um, your sleep gets a little bit disturbed uh, during the fast so I would encourage just um, use compound um, let me see if it's a compound B because last time I said vitamin B and it's a wrong one um, complex super B complex with electrolytes I would just begin to add that into your you know take one tablet a day um, uh, 
super B complex and then fasting salts and that could kind of maybe help uh, with that but if you're not sleeping at night you know just, just spend some time in prayer um, now if you're not sleep continue not sleeping at all and you, you literally like you hit with this insomnia um, then yeah you, you probably need to go see the doctor or just uh, or stop fasting but I've had when when I was doing a 40-day fast I've had this uh, for for about a week when I struggled to sleep at night I would go couldn't sleep until like two o'clock in the morning and I, I'm an early sleeper so I, like I go to sleep very early and um, but I, I just kind of read and waited till my body got tired then I would sleep I would sleep less it seems like my body would wake up way earlier and I, I felt fine so um, I just continued I didn't do anything um, I just kind of weathered that should I be expecting something from the Lord even if this is not a request fast? I dedicated this fast to get closer to God and to humble myself. I didn't ask for anything. Um, yeah, I think, you know, tomorrow I feel like I want to share that about the importance of when you don't ask God for anything, how God will answer still. Um, this is not to discourage us from asking God. But at the same time, um, I'm going to share with the, about this tomorrow. Because you have not asked. So I'm going to share about that tomorrow. So just uh, don't, don't miss tomorrow. Getting perverse dreams while fasting. This could be a way of God showing me what to pray for. Yeah, or this could be a way of God showing you what, what to begin to target specifically in your prayer. Could you share how your 25 to 40 day went on your 40 day? Um, so during a, from 25 days to 40 days, um, I just came from Ukraine. And um, so I had an international speaking trip. And it was, I was a little bit more weaker on some days. So I paced myself because I don't have a very physically demanding job. I had the freedom to rest more when I needed to and um, I continued to fast I'm gonna tell you that I did get discouraged sometime from 25 to 40 day to quit um, it was a little bit um, discouraging I had these thoughts you know like just just it felt like it will never end and you know all of that and so but I didn't let them take root in my heart I just persevered physically I've used, I experienced sometimes knee pain when I would sleep and then sometimes I had a hard time falling asleep for a few days um, but I just persevered and then I bought the fasting salt so I added that little powder into my drinks every few days and that's about it but um, overall it was just just normal it was just normal it, it did get a little bit discouraging around 30th day to kind of like oh I just want to quit and so but um, I just I knew it was in my head and so I didn't give it too much attention and thought and I tried to distract myself when those thoughts will come by reading by just doing something else so um, yeah are we supposed to be sexually pure during a fast I've just recently married so I've never had to deal with this in the fast now good question in the Bible um, it does not tell us to abstain from sex in marriage when you're fasting it says to abstain for a season of prayer and again it's not required it's not required it's just it's just an option so personally um, there is no biblical mandate about abstaining from sex when you are fasting fasting is abstaining from food okay not from sex so um, when you are married um, physical intimacy is part of of a good healthy relationship and it should be maintained and it should be um, and it should not be neglected um, and so this has nothing to do with that um, so I see that as no bearing now if the Lord puts on both of your hearts and you both agree that you want to abstain from that that's completely fine but at the same time fasting is not abstaining from sex it's abstaining from food 
So that's just what the scripture teaches us. And plus, when you're married, being sexually pure is not not having sex with your wife or your husband. Being sexually pure is having your thoughts pure, having your motives pure, having what you look at pure, and not having intimacy with other people, physical intimacy. So that is purity. There's nothing impure about a husband and wife uh, being together as husband and wife. And so um, if your thoughts are impure, if you're watching pornography, yeah, then you're not pure. But um, godly physical um, intimacy is pure. All right, guys, um, I am going to wrap this up. It's been an hour already. Tomorrow we are going to go just a little bit deeper and a little bit further and deal with the component of people which I believe will be very helpful for people who are fasting specifically for honestly drawing closer to God. They don't necessarily have a particular big request and so um, I'm going to give you a lot of encouragement tomorrow for that. So make sure that you join tomorrow. You don't um, miss tomorrow. We appreciate you. Some I see somebody is asking about the book. Um, so it's a fast forward book that goes along with our uh, fast um, 21 day devotional each day it has scriptures prayers uh, health tips and it there's an audio version for it there's a paperback there's a kindle and there's a hard cover now uh, right away i'm going to tell you the hard covers are pricey because it just takes a lot for amazon to make them and so they charge a lot and uh, for people like me, they don't give me an option to actually lower the price for it. Um, it has to be like the minimum of what it costs them. So if you already got this book, make sure that you leave a review. Much appreciated. If you haven't got it, just go on Amazon and get it today. Now, if you haven't got my other books like Break Free, Fight Fo Fa Fight Back, Single Ready to Mingle, Spirit Fill Jesus, make sure you check them out. They will be a great blessing to your walk with God. Amen. Appreciate you guys. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow.